Howdy. Welcome back to Dion Talk. This will be a live session where I cover my seller financing pick. If this is your first time to my channel, my goal is to teach the average person that you can reach financial freedom in 10 years or less, even if you're not starting from the best position, which I wasn't, and I did, and you will. When you're buying rental properties, we usually only have the option of getting up to 10 mortgages in our name if we're using uh, residential lending, so four units or less. So when you get to 10, you start having to use commercial loans, portfolio loans, or lending that is you know, usually a bit worse. It has higher interest rates. It's harder to get 30-year fixed rate debt. So using as many residential loans in your name as you can uh, can help an investor get started. So far, that's the only kind of loans that I have. I have seven properties, six mortgages. They're all residential loans. They're all 30-year fixed rate debt. Um, I'm starting to make a seller financing pitch with every offer that I make. There's a few benefits as a buyer for seller financing. You know, One, it doesn't take up one of your 10 loans that you can have in your name. Two, it can have a smaller down payment. Three, your debt to income ratio and your credit score may not matter as much to the seller as it will to a, a lender like a bank or a credit union or a mortgage company. So pitching seller financing to the seller is kind of hard. Um, there are some agents who think it's illegal, <laughs> which is ridiculous because it's a contract, just like the one you have with a lender, except the seller is carrying the note instead of the bank. And there are several benefits to a seller. So when I send my email to my agent to make the seller uh, financing um, pitch, I pretty much want to list out the benefits to the seller and point out why it's in their best interest. Because if you can get them to agree to it, and these are not where I'm going and finding off-market deals and doing driving for dollars and going to the county court record house to find divorces and looking up who owns property and finding a person who just wants to get rid of their house. I'm making these offers on MLS properties. The first time I did this was only like a month or two ago. And I kind of got the idea after talking with Matt, the lumberjack landlord and Michael Zuber from one rental at a time there, they do these kind of things all the time. So I'm incorporating it into my strategy. And so I've used this once and they accepted. So hundred percent success rate. That's gonna go down with every offer that I make, I guarantee it. So here are the basics of what I want my, my agent, because I'm still using an agent even though I'm doing seller financing. It is my goal to help my agent make a bunch of money because the more money they make, the more likely they are to bring me deals in the future. The start of the email is, are you open to seller financing? And you can find different ways of saying it. Are you open to carrying the note instead of me using traditional lending or however you want to put the language that makes the most sense to you? I put in there, I would like to avoid, I would like to help you avoid a large capital gains hit. Getting all of that money at once can cost you a lot in taxes. Some people haven't realized how much money they're going to have to pay in taxes. And some people are trying, or they realized it, and they're they're trying to find a way to not. So there's 1031 exchange, there's uh, several reasons why that large capital gains tax hit is probably the one of the reasons why people aren't selling. So if you make the offer with, if you carry the note, you're not going to have all of that money coming in at once. So you're going not going to have a large capital gains tax hit. The next line is, if you are open to it, there is a way for you to keep getting monthly income and not have to manage a property or deal with tenants. That all becomes my problem. So I'm letting them know they're going to consistently get monthly income, which is sometimes the goal. Somebody who's trying to leave real estate still wants that income, especially if they've been an, an investor and they're in their late 60s or 70s and they're trying to step out of the management role. Even managing a property manager can be more effort than they're looking to do. So pointing out that all of the problems of taking care of the tenants and the property becomes mine, but they still get the consistent monthly income. I then say, also, I would prefer to pay interest to you instead of a bank. I think you may like getting interest payments on top of the sales price. I don't offer a higher interest rate. Uh, some of the people that I've listened to or done the research on for seller financing offers say that you offer a higher interest rate than you're going to pay the bank because it's going to get their attention. They haven't really been watching what interest rates the banks get, so that doesn't matter. But pointing out that I would prefer to pay interest to you instead of the bank 
puts it in their mind that they're also going to earn interest on top of the sales price of the house. If the seller is looking to make consistent income, one of their fears might be that you do seller financing to buy the property. So you don't have the money to put the down payment. So you buy it with a low down payment and you get the good interest rate You get and you can do 30 year fixed rate debt. Some people do a balloon payment or, or whatever. I'm offering 30 year fixed rate. They just carry the note. So I put in my email that I'm willing to put a $20,000 early prepayment penalty because the seller's fear, if their agent warns them, could be that I buy it with seller financing and then I go finance the, the house because I've got it locked down to where I'm now in control of being able to get that loan or not. So then they get that big capital gains hit anyways. So alleviating that fear in advance by putting it in the email that I would be willing to give you an extra $20,000 if I refinanced in those five years or if I sold in those five years, you're basically going to get all this money all at once. So that kind of takes that fear off the table, letting the seller know that my motivation is to get the loan with them and keep it there. Um, once the sales go through, I like to point out to the seller that they own a note. Most people don't know what a note is, but it is a currency. That note has value. And there is an entire secondary market of notes. They actually have conventions and people buy and sell them all the time. Most times your bank gives you a mortgage on your property and then they sell that note to somebody else. Sometimes your bank will still collect the rent payment or the mortgage payments and pass it on to the person who owns the note. They become the it's not the carrier. There's a more professional term that you can insert there where they say they're no longer owning your mortgage. Uh, I, I think the one time so far in all the mortgages that I've had, a lender kept the mortgage for about three months before they sold it. And usually um, I use fairway mortgage and they've sold it before my first mortgage payment. Um, your seller can do the same thing. You buy the house, they carry the note. So if they want that consistent income, they can just sit on that note and get the monthly payments every month. If they need the money, they can sell the note. It's a real thing. Letting them know that can actually help them make the decision to go with seller financing. And then I say, I'm willing to have a call if you have any questions, because sometimes they might not understand. And uh, getting a phone call, it gets you one step closer to getting that property under contract. And then at the end of my uh, seller financing pitch, I will put, I'm also willing to buy the property with regular bank financing, but that sometimes takes longer with, an with the appraisal rules. Either way works for me. Do you have a preference and with a, and with a question mark? So I'm not giving them an option of saying yes or no to selling the house. I'm giving them an option to say, I prefer seller financing or traditional lending. So the answer is, is yes, either way, whichever one they pick. I mentioned the appraisal rules because on seller financing, it's not a requirement to have an appraisal. I would still have an inspection period in my actual offer, which is one of the reasons why I use an agent because they've got all the paperwork to get that done right, to put in the inspection clause and the, the duration of the inspection. So that's basically a seller financing pitch. I would include things like the price of the property, the earnest money, the amount that I'm gonna put down, um, you know, the, the specifics to the deal that you're trying to make. The down payment can change based on what the seller's needs are. Sometimes they will have a mortgage on the property. And so your down payment needs to pay off that mortgage if there's not much left, or you might need to take out a mortgage, like a regular mortgage to pay that one off. And then the seller can carry the rest of the, the balance. Um, one of the things that's a little bit tricky is I am using an agent. And if I find the property on the MLS, more than likely, the seller is also using an agent or they're the agent, but they're usually using an agent too. So there's going to be 6% of the purchase value is going to go into, out into agent fees. So my down payment includes enough money to where the seller is going to be able to pay the 6% agent fees and pay off any mortgages that they have and walk away with them the amount of money that they need to sell the property. They shouldn't have to sell the property and then have the expense of paying the agent fees. So that might make your down payment a little bit larger but it still can be a lot less than coming up with a full 20 or 25% that a traditional lender might want you to have. 